Kato Lansdowne. Um, my name is Jill Wildman. I have, <coughs> sorry, I've had the pleasure of being the business advisor on the la latter phases of Bristol and Bath Creative R&D. And I've been given a little soapbox today, so buckle up. Because what I'm talking about is how do we create a fertile space for the kinds of companies that we've seen, you're seeing here today and tomorrow. And we're seeing a, some amazing excellence in terms of turning ideas into new products, services and experiences. And I want to see us doing more. I'm also trying to do a clicker with my phone, which I'm really, really excited by. And the reason why this matters is because these companies, creative industries, of which these fantastic technology companies and people trying out new ideas are just part of. But this industry is growing at four times the size of the, of the UK economy. So when we talk about whether they contribute money or not, they're contributing. They're contributing in a big scale. So as much as I'm not necessarily going to talk about government policies, when we talk about growth, this is already going on. The GVA, the gross value add produced by the creative industries, and again, I'm talking very broadly here, is greater than that which is produced by aerospace, automotive, life sciences, oil and gas sectors combined. So it's not a small thing that we do, it's a huge thing that we do. And so when we are actually Produce, putting money, putting public funding, as this project has done, we put public funding into new idea development and we produce amazing stuff. Quick story, Andy De La Tour, a comedian, went to the US, had an Arts Council grant, went to the comedy store in the US, brought back the idea to London and the alternative comedy circuit of the UK was a, the result. Not just does he bring back ideas, but he brings back space for new things to happen and for a platform for other comedians to make their livings and, and actually expand on a whole sector. What creative businesses do is they explore and experiment with new technologies. So what you're seeing here is massive experimentation. They create new products and services and a different form of innovation. And they do it with agility, and um, at the fraction of a cost of corporate innovation. I know this because I used to be a consultant for corporates. Let me give you a couple of examples. These are not Bristol and Bath companies. These are other companies. But for example, looking at Goliath that's produced by the company Anagram, not only do they produce an amazing uh, um, VR experience, but they build empathy towards schizophrenia. Every creative piece of technology work not only does one thing, the thing it's intended to do, but also has a wider impact. And go and see this, by the way. This is not one of our companies, but, but Frame Rate by ScanLab has allowed, with their 3D scans, has allowed geologists to see change in land and landscape in a way they never could before. So this opening up is really critical. Another company that I work with, also not part of this project, but I just wanted to introduce them into this conversation. Amshala has produced the most amazing luxury goods, affordable luxury goods, that are sustainable and vegan. And she's just managed to uh, grab from Bristol and Bath Regional Capital a six-figure investment sum. So th the companies that, we are, that are in our orbit are really exciting and are really growing and going somewhere. That's not the point. Not everyone wants to do that. And that's a really important point here. Other companies like Celestial, who have been part of the Bristol and Bath Creative Cluster, have taken something like doing city displays into a way that actually gets rid of the need for fireworks and produces the most uh, amazing, defining uh, kinds of experiences. Two companies that you'll see tomorrow, um, Lantern Room by Raucus and Grow by Trigger Stuff, both are exploring new models of touring that reduce our impact on the planet in the touring models that we use. 
and the kinds of things they're doing are going to have sector-wide um, impacts. But what's so special about creative businesses? Well, they are they're great at creative work, but they have to work really hard at the business side of things. It's not necessarily something they have been taught. They're amazing at what they do, but they don't necessarily know how to build things out in terms of a, a vehicle that can support them. They're not independently wealthy most of the time. They don't necessarily have families with deep pockets. So the notion that your family might support you is not necessarily on offer here. And as I said before, they've got a history of doing a lot with a little, which doesn't mean they should continue to do so, but it does mean that they spend their money really, really well. Um, can I get a whoop for any creative business in the audience who spends their money really well? <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, but they don't need to compensate for weird kinds of exposure that people might want them to do for free. So my focus in the work that I do has been to support companies that are going from project to project yeah. as an existence into creative businesses that are powered by projects, that start to build <laughs> reserves, that start to build a buffer. And then finally, to get to a point where they're creative businesses powered by multiple revenue streams and benefiting from the val value that they create. There are hurdles in that. Come, Mr. Do <laughs> They have the kinds of expectations on them that they're not necessarily well prepared to be able to deliver. So often the, the kind of next step from a public program like this is to investors. And the problem with investors is that they can ask um, unexpected demands in the terms of either turnover or customers when they're just not there yet. So we, can't, we start to describe this kind of hole between the public funding that we produce and the, whoever's going to pick them up next. That is changing, but it's still something to keep our eye on. And then, for example, an investor might say something like this, which is from ed edge investors, edge investments, that other investors see the creative sector as impossible to make a return. So, uh, another part of my work, and I think a, a real um, push to the investment community, would be come and meet us halfway. Come and talk to us about what you might do that isn't just high rates of return, because you will get them later. So what I'm asking for, and what this whole talk is about, is about creating a fertile space. A space for creatives, just as this funding does a space for them to work and think, a space for them to collaborate with each other because that's how we work. We don't do things on our own. We want access to time to focus on the business, not to have to do it in the, the spare time, but actually time to actually do business thinking and business development. And then access to finances and not just the, the tech startup leftovers, but actually something that's a little more shaped around the creative industries and what we need. And to understand the landscape of finance, because that's changing too. And this is why I think it's important, because any investment that we put in to creative in companies now produces GVA, yes, and business growth. And not again, not everyone wants to grow but some do. It creates new jobs and businesses, collaborations and partnerships. It creates social value, that being really critical too, through products, services and experiences. It creates innovation and value, and value of the R&D and the new IP. It creates sector uplift. Are you getting my picture yet? It creates sector uplift, regional uplift. It, gets, it creates international trading. The ROI on creative investment is huge and we are not currently mapping its breadth and the whole of it. We're mapping certain parts of it. And currently there is a cliff edge between some of the, program, the programs like this and actually long-term strong funding. And yesterday I, I emailed a 
the companies I've been working with for what they are, what they would find would help them make the business work right now. And for everybody, it's about longer term funding. So if you've got the ear of any of the research councils, of any investors, of any government, I'm asking you right now to ask them and emphasize on them about how exciting that investment is and why it's worth doing. So that we can get things like seeing Stephen K. Amos at the comedy store because that whole environment has been created. And just like the work we're doing today, we're going to see a massive exploration. Thank you.